Well, a lot of the news coming into this ball game in the last few days is who would start at quarterback for the Tigers. Announced yesterday by head coach Gus Malzahn that the Tigers will go with a true freshman at quarterback in Carver of Montgomery star Jeremy Johnson. Gabe, you have the knowledge. You know what it's like to be a true freshman starting at quarterback at Auburn University. You did it in your year here. Talk about what goes through a player's mind, especially a player that was in high school a year ago yeah. that is now going to start at quarterback for the Auburn Tigers. Uh, I tell you what, the first thing is very obvious. Uh, Jeremy Johnson is going to be extremely excited about the game today. He, he's, he's been dreaming of this moment all of his life, just like every young player does. He's a true freshman fixing to step on the field as Auburn's starting quarterback. And the first thing you got to do is get your nerves under control. And sometimes that may take a lick or two in the game to get that accomplished or a short pass completed just to have a little success, get yourself calmed down. But I tell you, he's dealing with a lot of things, uh, benefits that a lot of young quarterbacks don't have. He's dealing with an established running game, going to have a three-headed monster in, at the running back, giving him some breaks. Uh, just an extremely talented young man as well. His, his stats in high school, very, very impressive. Threw for over 3,000 yards last year at Carver. He was Mr. Football in the state of Alabama. Good size at 6'5". He will start for the injured Nick Marshall, who probably won't play this afternoon. Well, for Western Carolina, they have to deal with, regardless of the quarterback, a very good running game for the Tigers. As you mentioned, that three-headed monster at tailback, they've all rushed for over 100 yards, as has Marshall. And Cortland Carson is the middle linebacker for Western Carolina this afternoon. Yeah, he is, and he's going to have his hands full, but if you're Western Carolina, that's the guy you want to have your hands full. He, he leads the Southern Conference in tackles. He is their best defensive player, and he's going to have to have a well of a game to, to slow down the Auburn running attack. 65 tackles for Carson, and he will get plenty of opportunities against this Auburn running game this afternoon. Homecoming, Auburn and Western Carolina, and we'll be back with the first half play-by-play -play after this. He's... significant injuries. Gus Malzahn in his first season at Auburn, as you saw, 4-1 and one with the Tigers, of course, 9-3 and three a year ago and led Arkansas State to the Sun Belt Conference Championship. And, uh, they play, it's a very interesting decision the last two days yep. to go with a true freshman at Jeremy Johnson. He told me on the radio pregame show on the Auburn IMG Sports Network that there have been times already this season that Jeremy Johnson nearly came into a ball game already. Hadn't happened. He will get his first action in his first start here this afternoon. And I tell you what, that speaks a lot for that young man. It, it, Auburn 
obviously what happened last year, four and one start this year. And to think there are still times that he almost got his first action of the season tells you how not only how talented he is, but when he lost that starting job, he didn't quit working. He has kept working, kept improving every day, and he is absolutely getting ready to step on the field as the starting quarterback at Auburn University. A picture-perfect day at Jordan here. Stadium winds out of the north to northwest at nine miles an hour. Low humidity, mostly sunny skies, and 79 degrees for homecoming Saturday as Auburn University faces Western Carolina University. With Gabe Gross, I'm Andy Bertram. Glad to have you with us throughout the country as uh, you watch this game throughout and with a lot of Auburn clubs and folks in Western Carolina watching this one as well. We're certainly glad to have you here today. Clark, uh, Richard Sigmund will kick it off for Western Carolina, junior from Mount Holly, North Carolina. And a high, short kick that is a taken and a dropped out of bounds at the 26-yard line. So Auburn will open first down and 10. At its own 26-yard line and on for the very first time in his college career. What must be going through his mind, number six, Jeremy Johnson will come out. 6'5", 219-pound freshman out of Carver High School in Montgomery, Alabama. Threw for 3,193 yards a year ago. 31 touchdown passes. Rushed for another seven touchdowns in 705 yards. And the 2012 Mr. Football in the state of Alabama. As Auburn opens up first down and 10 at the 26-yard line. And Johnson with the handoff. Ricardo Lewis around right end and across the 31-yard line out to the 36. As we take a look at the Auburn offensive line, for, we'll take a look at the skill positions first. Mason Coates, Bray, Reed, and Uzama. As Auburn opens up now, second down, or first down, and the handoff right up the middle to Cameron Artis Payne. And he bowls his way out near the 44-yard line as we take a look at the Auburn offensive front. Robinson, Kozan, Dismutes, Slade, and Avery Young getting the start over Patrick Miller today at the right tackle spot. Second down and four for Auburn. The ball at the 43-yard line. The handoff to Trey Mason. Stiff arms one man across midfield and out of bounds in Western Carolina territory. He's down at the 43-yard line. As we look at the defense for Western Carolina, up front, Macbeth, Mooring, Matungalu, and Hawkins. On that front, it's not a big front, Jordan, Carson, and Gill, linebacker for the Catamounts. And there's your secondary, Payne, Harris, Clark, and Morgan. Again, Trey Mason. With a cut inside the 40, down close to the 35-yard line. And Trey Mason close to, or a, a yard or two shy of an Auburn first down. And Auburn really doing exactly what they need to do. I kind of spoke about it in the pregame. Jeremy Johnson's got to rely on a heavy dose of the running game, get that comfortable, get him in the game, and that's, that's what they're doing. Second and two for the Tigers. Mason sets up on the right side of the true freshman, Jeremy Johnson. And Johnson will pass for the first time. First down to Trovon Reed at the 20-yard line. And you're talking about a confidence builder. Very, very nicely done by Gus Malzahn as well. Getting the running game established, opening up the middle of the field. And Jeremy Johnson does a great job in hitting Trevon Reed. Down to the 20-yard line. First and 10 for Auburn on its initial drive. 13-15 and counting in the first half. Mason into the clear, inside the five, down to the goal line. Wow, well, that looked like he got in. A touchdown for Mason. We didn't see the, uh, the well, call that, yeah, from the never, official. Never saw the signal, but uh, that's how you script the first quarterback, uh, first drive for a new quarterback right there. Run the ball, run the ball, get success. He completes a pass and you score a touchdown. How you draw it up. 16th touchdown in Trey Mason's career. His 14th rushing touchdown. As Auburn will set up for the point after attempt. Six plays and 74 yards for Auburn on the initial drive. And it was a heavy dose of the run with one pass. It's Cody Parkey with the extra point. And he remains perfect on the season. Another look at the Trey Mason touchdown. His 14th as a runner at Auburn University. To the outside and a dive to the end zone and Auburn leads Western Carolina 7-0.
Auburn's a great running team, but obviously takes some pressure off Jeremy Johnson, getting the flow of the game a little bit before you really ask him to do something, and that's exactly what happened. Every play positive, running the football, and all of a sudden you pop one in the middle, let him complete a pass and hand it back off to you. Experience tailback and let him get in the end zone. A minute 57 on the drive, six plays and 74 yards, capped off by that touchdown run by Mason and Jeremy Johnson. Uh, successful on his opening drive of his Auburn career. He was in the mix right up until they named Nick Marshall as the starting quarterback prior to that first game with Washington State. Gus Malzahn has said that there were times where already in this four and one season for Auburn there was talk of, of bringing him in a ball game. So and good to see Trevon Reed catching the ball as Absolutely. well. Absolutely. Cody Parkey to kick it away. And Sean Warren from the one. And Warren swarmed at the nine-yard line. Brandon King, I believe, on that play and just came from the outside and made a great play. So first down and 10 for Western Carolina inside the 10-yard line. As you take a look at uh, the starting quarterback for Troy Mitchell out of Houston, Texas, six foot, 200 pounds, just a sophomore a year ago, set the Western Carolina record for most touchdowns by a quarterback with eight. First and 10 for the Catamounts. The ball is at the 10. And a handoff and not much doing for Darius Ramsey. As you look at Ramsey's numbers, number 20, along with Benson, Police, Robinson, and Goodman. On the line, Murray, Poindexter, Thornton, Kirby, and Weinberg. No gain on first down, second down and 10 for the Catamounts. The roll out and the throw up the sideline and incomplete. Pass was uh, intended for Terry and Robinson. As you look at the Auburn defense, this front is becoming quite formidable. Ford, Igwe Wright, and Ladarius Owens at defensive end. Holland and Casanova McKenzie. Good to see Casanova back out there for the Tigers. And then Therese, Mincy, Whitehead, Holsey, and Davis. And it brings up third down for the Catamounts. Third and a 10. Thirty-two percent this season for Western Carolina on third down. Mitchell rolling and throwing the pass intended and over the head of Kernoris Benson, the 6'1", 205-pound sophomore from Atlanta, Georgia. And a late flag come flying in the middle. I didn't really see what happens, but uh, we checked that. Hubert Owens is the referee this afternoon. Squavalis Murray, the left tackle, it was downfield. So three and out for Western Carolina, and Clark Seacrest will come on to punt it away. And Auburn doing really exactly what they need to do, exactly what uh, you would really expect to have happen, come out strong on offense, run the ball, defense looks good early as well. Punter, a preseason All-Southern Conference selection for Western Carolina as Quan Bray stands at the 50-yard line to field this one. Trevon Reed, the up man, about 10 yards in front. A low line drive kick, and Reed is the one that takes it at the 43-yard line. Trying to get to the far side of the field and uh, taken down. And it looked like right there that uh, Auburn had a return set up that way, and Trevon was just trying to get to it and couldn't quite, quite get around the guys he needed to to get the corner. 33-yard punt, good field position for the Tigers of Auburn. First and 10 when we come back, Auburn will open up at the Western Carolina 47 on this homecoming Saturday on the Plains.
for Von Reed, you know, 10 yards, as you said, out in front. Uh, they've seen that before, uh, trying to, to roll the punt formation uh, and, and kick, and a lot of times you just kick, up, kick a low-line drive or, or something like that, and instead of letting it hit and maybe get away, you put a guy up there early, let him catch the ball. Trevon does that and gives Auburn good field position. So the Tigers will open up first and 10 at the 47 yard line and Gus Malzahn told fans on the Auburn IMG Sports Network radio pregame show that the first two drives would be scripted. Now that first one was scripted well. <laughs> it, it, it was scripted really well. Uh, if you know you can get uh, 10 yards a chunk every time you want to run the ball it opens up a, a lot of different things and and you know obviously good to know they uh, they scripted that. No one, they're going to run four running plays before they let Jeremy throw. Three carries for 42 yards for Mason, who lines up just to the left of Johnson. Marcus Davis, the man in motion. Johnson looking downfield. Stevens has it for a first down for the Tigers. Tony Stevens, one of the Auburn freshman wide receivers, as Auburn quickly gets back to the line of scrimmage. 19 yards on first down. Trey Morgan with the catch as we see Johnson now go to a wide receiver spot in the Wildcat. Cameron Artis Payne, number 44, sets up as the Auburn quarterback. With a man in motion, and Payne will run it. Big hole up the middle. And Payne inside the 25 yard line, still pushing forward. And a good second effort by Cameron Artis Payne as he is inside the 25 yard line. Dylan Sluter, the stop for Western Carolina. And Western Carolina really kind of did a good job of closing that down. It looked like a lot more there when he first popped through the hole, and, and then also a good job by Cameron Artis Payne bulldozing his way through there. Three wide receivers set for the Tigers. Play action in the throw. That's Daquan Bray. Able to get past two men and Bray inside the 20 yard line down to about the 19 yard line. Brian Johnson number 91 on the stop for Western Carolina. And it will bring up third down and a yard for Auburn. At the WCU 19 yard line. And Payne back at the Wildcat for Auburn. And he will run it and he will get the first down. He's inside the 10. Inside the 10 down to the 8 for the Tigers. And another big hole right up the gut right there. A little bit of almost a miss, uh, miscommunication on the, the, the read right there with the fake. But keeps the ball and gets up in the hole and gets the first down near to the near to the 6 or 7 yard line. First and 10 for Auburn. First and goal I should say for Auburn at the 8. Ricardo Lewis flanks Johnson on first and goal from the eight for Auburn. Payne the man in motion. On the rollout, Johnson. He throws. Touchdown! I'll tell you what, Jeremy Johnson, if you're looking for something uh, to indicate how he's feeling, he looks so calm and relaxed in what he's doing. There's no hurry in what he's doing. There's no second guessing himself. He's very good in his decision making and, and also throwing a touchdown pass to Jay Frost. You know, that's going to make everybody happy. Get it to the fullback. And for Jay Price, his third touchdown in his Auburn career, but his first receiving touchdown as Auburn goes five plays and 47 yards. And Johnson right now perfect on the day. Three of three as Cody Parkey puts it through the uprights. And Auburn has opened up a 14-point lead with 10 minutes and 14 seconds to go in the first half of play. Take a look now as you look at the, the rollout and the touchdown, Gabe. Yeah. Like I said, just calm, waited for Jay to come all the way across the field and, and, and hit him right between the numbers, rolling out, buying time, buying time, and then bam, there he is, hit the ball, and soft hands yeah. by the fullback catching that ball. He's had a, he's had a cast on that hand, has Jay Prosh, but uh, Johnson found him, and, and Johnson had more than one option on yeah, that play. He did. He did have more than one option, and I love the reaction after he throws the football, after, after the touchdown. He didn't. Flip, do a flip or jump up and down. Hey, made the play, turn around, get back on the sidelines. We got more game to play. Just the fourth catch of the season for Jay Prosh and the tenth of his Auburn career, but his first receiving touchdown for the big fullback out of uh, Mobile, Alabama. Six foot, 258 pounds, and typically he's the guy clearing the way for someone, but that time he was in the clear and caught the touchdown pass, and Auburn has gone up 14 to nothing. And so far, you've got to like what you see from the true freshman quarterback, Jeremy Johnson. You really do. Very calm, very relaxed. And not only that, but we've seen three different receivers that haven't caught a lot of passes, catch passes. 
Sean Warren will let this one go over his head as Cody Parkey with another touchback for the Tigers. And Western Carolina will get the ball first and 10 at its own 35 yard line as Auburn wasted a little time going 47 yards five plays and Auburn's two touchdown drives have each been under two minutes a minute 50 on that second touchdown drive. Yeah, we still got more than 10 minutes left in the first quarter. Indeed. First and 10 Western Carolina. And Western Carolina really they, they they really desperately need to get a first down or two right here to give their defense a little bit of a break. Mitchell out of the shotgun on first and 10 from the 25. They hand off and some room up the middle for Ramsey. Middle linebacker number five for the Tigers with the stop Jake Holland. A gain of four on first down out to the 29 yard line. You start looking for quarterback Troy Mitchell to really I would expect them to get him involved in the game with his legs a little bit. Yeah, very good running quarterback for this Western Carolina ball club. Second and six for the Catamounts from the 29. And there's the first run by uh, Mitchell. And he gets across the 30 out to the 31 yard line. Number 94, Nosa Igwe on the stop for Auburn. And also a really good play right there by Craig Sanders. He was engaged right there and kind of fell off the block as the quarterback went by and kind of sandwiched with those equally. Really good play by both those guys. Third and four for the Catamounts. Gary Lewis and Darius Ramsey flanked the quarterback, Troy Mitchell. Mitchell out of the shotgun with time. Now flushed. And throws, and the pass is complete at midfield to Carnaris Benson, a sophomore from Atlanta, Georgia. And really their best receiver, their, their biggest playmaker. And right there, Auburn's de defense had the, had the play covered. And then when Troy came out and started scrambling, they, they sucked into that and left, and left a wide-open receiver in the middle of the field. He kind of breaks out to the left, and they all come to him, and then there's the receiver open. Benson with 212 yards, a career high earlier this season against Mars Hill. And a first down for the Catamounts at the Auburn 49 yard line. A four wide set for Western Carolina. They hand off to Ramsey and he's taken down at the line of scrimmage. A host of Auburn tacklers in on the stop. And a good job of holding the line of scrimmage. Really no push right there whatsoever from Western Carolina. Defensive lineman stolen the offensive, offensive lineman and you get no game. Second and 10 for Western Carolina. As Benson but Ramsey checks out of the lineup. And a five wide set now for the Catamounts. Second down in 10 from the 49. Auburn rushes four and a whistle and a flag. Fall start of the offense. And be, five yard penalty. Go ahead, Gabe. That'll be it, it, interesting kind of going forward. I, I think Western Carolina is going to have to try to run the ball a little bit up the middle, but uh, center Jake Thornton is only 260 pounds and giving away some uh, pretty significant weight advantage to Auburn's defensive tackles, whoever they happen to have in the game. Head coach for Western Carolina, excuse me, the coordinator, Brad Glenn, the offensive coordinator, quarterbacks coach. Seven and a half minutes to go in the first quarter. 14 nothing Auburn. Second and 15. The throw is complete. And taken down inside or back to the original line of scrimmage. Ryan Smith on the stop for Auburn. I believe that's Michael Helms Jr. on the catch and, and really the uh, uh, nice receiving tight end for Western Carolina. Mark Spear in his second uh, season at his and his second stint at Western Carolina graduate from Clemson. There's third and nine for the Catamounts. Mitchell in some trouble. 
And a lot of room to run now. First down and more for Mitchell and out of bounds inside the 30-yard line. And that is absolutely the dimension that he brings to the table. You you have got to keep uh, keep in your lanes, keep him bottled up. A great job by Gabe Sanders right there, kind of getting the play uh, disrupted. But Mitchell able to use his legs, and once he got outside, there was nobody there. 19-yard run for Mitchell and a first down for Western Carolina. The deepest penetration by the Catamounts to the Auburn 29-yard line. I mentioned they needed to get a couple first downs. They've done that and, and more, and now they're knocking on the door. From the 29, first and 10 for Western Carolina. Ramsey the carry, and uh, taken down after a one-yard gain. The carry, Darius Owens, I believe, making that play right there and a very good job of falling down inside and making a tackle. Another good job of Auburn's defensive line. Uh, just, just not going anywhere on the run. They are all right there and not giving very many holes to run into. Owens had just come in the game prior to that play and immediately makes the stop. And it's a second down and nine situation for the Catamounts. Ramsey, the lone back, along with the quarterback in a four-wide set from the 28-yard line. Play action, Mitchell eludes one man and then immediately goes down. D. Ford got one shot at him, got him on the second got him, got him on the other round. When you miss him, get off the ground because hey, when a guy like Troy Mitchell, he may be coming back by in a minute, and, and that's exactly what happened. He's trying to scramble back around and couldn't get loose from D. Ford. Misses him the first time, gets turned back yep. inside, I believe, by who was that, Elijah Daniel right. could, could turn back, and then D. Ford right there to get him. 13th career sack for D. Ford, his third of the season, and his third in as many in, in the last two games. A loss of 12 for Western Carolina, back to the 40. And really, D. Ford, a pass rusher that Auburn has to have play big. Good to have him back in the lineup for the Tigers, to be sure. Mitchell sets up and throws. It is a complete Carnaris Benson. And Benson taken down at the 32-yard line. Nice job of tackling out in the open field, uh, making a play. One thing you can't have always on defense is missed tackles and a good job of sure takedown and making this a, a pretty lengthy, I believe it's going to be about a 49-yard field goal try. Jermaine Whitehead on the stop for Auburn. And it will be a field goal attempt of a 47 yards for Richard Sigmund. His long this season is 28. This would be the longest of his Western Carolina career. His longest is 40 yards. And this is a 47 yard attempt. Make that 49 yards. He has plenty of leg. Boy, didn't he? And he made it. Great looking kick right there. 49 yard field goal is, 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 is not a chip shot and he, he would have been good from about 55 right there. A career best for Richard Sigmund, the junior from Mount Holly, North Carolina, 49 yards. And Western Carolina is on the board. Auburn on top, 14 to 3 in the first quarter. He's quick. to college football in the South. Fans just can't get enough. CSS brings you Auburn replays every Sunday at 5 p.m. Central and Wednesday at 11.30 a.m. in high definition on demand. Visit css-sports.com for a complete schedule. 14 to 3, Auburn on top on this homecoming Saturday. Beautiful day. Temperatures in the low 80s. Nice breeze throughout the ballpark here this afternoon. As Auburn's offense will get its third crack here. Jeremy Johnson has been perfect 
in his first two Auburn drives and in his first three passes, including a touchdown pass to Jay Prosh. Dave Gross is one of five previous Auburn true freshmen to start at quarterback for the Tigers. You remember that day? I do remember that day very well. We we went to Starkville. I'd come in late, uh, or I should say not late, kind of in the middle of the game against Tennessee, but our next game was against Mississippi State at Starkville and uh, a lot, a lot of butterflies. It is, it's, it's a lot different being the most popular guy on campus as the backup quarterback, and then when they tap you, tap you on the shoulder and tell you you're now the starter, a lot more pressure goes into that, but uh, a very memorable day to me, uh, for me, even though it didn't really turn out real well for us, uh, but getting a start in the SEC for Auburn University is special no matter when it happens. Seacrest had just hit the 49-yard field goal, the very high, short kickoff. And a nice return for the Tigers. Typically, you don't see Gabe Sanders. I Gabe believe, I believe <laughs> that that kick. That'd be something. Greg Sanders, yeah. Uh, excuse me, yeah, Craig, uh, Craig Sanders. But uh, see him break outside and uh, go down the go down the sideline would be a, an interesting sight. He didn't hesitate, did he? He did not. No, <laughs> he did not. Uh, and you know, I, I think they swapped uh, once they saw what Western Carolina was doing. They kind of swapped Nosa uh, from being in that position uh, to Craig, who may be. Maybe a little uh, a little faster, maybe another little step right there. Nice return though for Auburn out to the 35 yard line. Double wide receiver set three in the backfield with Johnson who goes back to pass and looks long down the seam and it's incomplete. Well it had to happen. Yeah. <laughs> Intended for uh, Ricardo Lewis number five the sophomore out of Miami Florida. That pass was shy. Didn't have much of a chance yeah. for for Ricardo Lewis to make the catch. No, and he and he had a step. Uh, he just needed to lay it out there. He needed to use that big arm and every bit of it probably, and he probably still couldn't have thrown out out thrown uh, Ricardo Lewis. Cameron Artis Payne back in the Wildcat again for the Tigers on second down and ten from the 35. Marcus Davis in motion and Payne up the middle. Oh, excuse me, it is Davis on the carry and out across midfield. A nice run by Marcus Davis. Jaleel Lorquette with the stop. I believe that was Corey. Uh, it was Corey Grant. Yeah, Corey Grant coming around the end. And it was a nice run. Kind of got outside and, and picked up, uh, I don't know what was that would have about 15 yards or so. 19 on the carry. 19. Out to the 46 of Western Carolina. Payne stays in as the tailback as Johnson retreats to throw. And looks long down the field, and it's caught, touchdown! And that's that's the way to use that arm right there. Boy, a very nice pass all the way down the field, and I like Gus Malzahn coming back to another deep ball and letting him throw it again. And it was the man that was intended on the incomplete pass, Ricardo Lewis. Boy, very nice play. I mean, not I mean, just just absolutely perfectly thrown ball after throwing really a, a really poorly thrown ball the, the time before. Not letting that bar bother him stepping right back up in there and laying it out perfectly. 46 yards on the touchdown pass. As Cody Parkey comes on, he's perfect this season. 15 of 15. And point after attempts. And uh, true. <laughs> And that was the punter. It marked it was the holder, not number 19, Ryan White. To take a look at the replay here. Yeah, and Jeremy Johnson just you know, really let it loose. He didn't let it loose on the one before that, but did there and did just perfectly thrown ball. A look from the end zone here, and uh, Johnson had plenty of time to throw the football yeah, here nice, as well. Nice job of, of tackles, getting the guys around. He steps up into the pocket. You, you don't execute a play any better than that. For Ricardo Lewis, his first Auburn touchdown and the second touchdown pass in the ball game for Jeremy Johnson. And I know, I, I, boy, I really like Jeremy Johnson's reaction after all these plays. Very calm, very subdued. I know the, the first touchdown I threw in the Mississippi State game, I was anything but calm and subdued when that when that happened. And <laughs> I, I like that a lot. He, he's in control of what he's doing and, and staying very level-headed, and that's a good sign. So Auburn has scored touchdowns on its first three drives against Western Carolina. It's a 21 to 3. Auburn lead just 314 to go in the first half, or first quarter, excuse me. And all three of Auburn's drives have been six plays or less. And Parkey will kick it away for the Tigers of Auburn.
high and deep and through the uprights. No opportunity for Western Carolina to return that one and the Catamounts will open first and 10 at their own 25 yard line. They got on the board on the last drive did Western Carolina on the 49 yard field goal from Clark Sechrist and the new quarterback for Well, it will be Mitchell that comes back in Washington for the quarterback. On the 25. A four wide set for Western Carolina. And Sean Warren in at the tailback spot for the Catamounts. Mitchell on the quarterback draw. And taken down on the play. Anthony Swain comes up and makes a great tackle right there. One on one with a guy who's known as a quarterback for being able to scramble and use his legs. Coming off uh, his best game of the year last uh, last week. Best game of his career. No question about that. Came in after Casanova McKenzie went down and Swain was terrific for Auburn a week ago. With eight tackles. In his first action for the Tigers. A gain of three on first down and Mitchell will try and run this one again. Puts his head down and gets out to about the 30 yard line. D Ford among those there for the Tigers for the stop. And a big third down. Auburn's, uh, you know, always talk about third down. And another big one. Don't want to let Western Carolina have too much success. Uh, if you're Auburn, they already drove the length of the field, really got a nice field goal try, and, and just don't let them get ahead of steam going. Third and four for the Catamounts. Play clock down to 10. Mitchell a handoff. And uh, shy of the uh, the Western Carolina first down. Stop wide number 17, Chris Frost. Chris nice. Frost on the stop for Auburn. Nice job by a couple guys right there. It looked like he hit a stone wall uh, about a yard after the line of scrimmage and push back and well short of the first down Gary Lewis a couple yards shy of the first down and uh, Western Carolina will be on to punt the ball Auburn used Trevon Reed as an up man in that first punt Squan Bray drops deep for Auburn he's back at about the uh, 22 yard line Bray up at the 40 Seekers punts it away and past Bray as it takes a Western Carolina bounce inside the 10 or the 15 yard line and to down to the 13. So Auburn pinned as deep as the Tigers have been today. 43 yard punt that time for Seacrest. And Auburn has gone six plays, 74 yards, five plays, and 47 yards. And three plays in 65 yards, all resulting in touchdowns. And now Auburn will open up first and 10 at its own 14. I believe that's Kyle Frazier. Is that Frazier just line walk back? He is in a slot. He has been moved to the wide receiver spot. And here's Corey Grant. Cuts it upfield and gets to the 15 yard line, and that is all. A Fortland Carson, Kristen Gill on the stop. A short run right there, but I, you know, I, I mentioned Kyle Frazier being in the game, kind of really lined up in the running back position, came out and, and made a very nice block. I know they're trying to get him in the game. You, you, a lot of comparisons to Cody Burns, and I know plays like that and blocking is what made Cody Burns so special, not to mention catching touchdown in the championship game. Trey Mason back at the tailback spot for Auburn, second and eight. Play comes from the sideline and Mason moves to the left side of Johnson. Play clock is down to three. Johnson gets away from one man, throws on the run and shy on the play. Trying to get the ball to Marcus Davis. And tough throw right there. Tried, you know, peeled around and still had somebody in his face. Couldn't really get in the end of the throw and just couldn't quite get it there. Mason had stepped up and tried to pick up the the. the Pressure coming from the corner. Johnson was able to step around it, throw it on the run, but the pass was shy. Just the second incomplete pass in the final seconds of this first quarter, and it's third down and eight. Johnson throws complete. And a pass complete out there for Melvin Ray. 
Jaleel Larquette, number two, with the stop. That will be enough for an Auburn first. Yeah, that's, that's his first reception, isn't it? First reception as an Auburn Tiger. Congratulations. 33rd round draft choice of the Los Angeles Dodgers out of high school. And yards on the play, and here's Trey Mason. Flag is down in the backfield as Mason gets out to about the 33 yard line on what may be the final play of the first quarter. And Hubert Owens will give us the call. This will come back. Take your previous spot. Still first down. Avery Young, who got the start at right tackle today for Patrick Miller. Yeah, he, he, he spun him around, and that uh, that'll get you. Uh, usually, when you see multiple flags for holding, it's something. It's something pretty obvious. And as the clock starts, that takes us to the end of the first quarter of play, and it was a first quarter that was dominated by Auburn. Three drives, three touchdowns. That fourth drive will extend into the second quarter for Auburn. A beautiful homecoming afternoon at Jordan Hare Stadium. Auburn up 21 to three. That I think you said that the two drives, the first two drives are going to be scripted, and uh, they turned him loose a little bit in the second drive on purpose. But I've, I got to believe that they they see his comfort, and you know he's six, uh, what is it, six of eight, 102 yards, two touchdowns, and the more they see him comfortable, the more they're going to give him. Kudos to the offensive line for the Tigers. The fact that I mean that really, with the exception of maybe one play, he hasn't had a lot of pressure. He's been able to set up and and find his receivers and throw. Auburn also has has really distributed the ball well. Six different receivers with catches in the first quarter of play, and that's and that's also a good sign. You got Jeremy Johnson being comfortable to throw the ball to multiple guys and doesn't just have one or two guys that he's feeling comfortable with and trying to just stick the ball in there. He is using the reads, using the play calls, and just getting the ball where the wide where the receivers open. And we've yet to see him run the football so far. It might not. Uh, you, you got one quarterback nicked up. Right. Uh, don't know that you want to get another one nicked up. As the second quarter begins, the Tigers look at first and 20 following a holding penalty that closed the first quarter of play. And in motion, Ricardo Lewis to the outside. Across the 40, out to the 46. The Miami, Florida sophomore, 6'2", 215 pounds. And he's had two big runs and right there. Does a great job of splitting the hole and then getting to the outside and getting more yards. That's just a tremendous play. Kristen Gill and Sertonius Harris combined on the stop for Western Carolina to the 46 yard line. First down. Mason into the backfield. Mason with the carry. And Mason taken down after maybe a yard, and that's about all. He, he met a uh, freight train in the hole right there. Uh, I mean, a, a lick passed. Uh, Andrew Maiden making that tackle. 
tell you what, he came up and, and, and put the wood to Trey Mason. Don't see Auburn go to a huddle very often. It's Grant on the carry. Good block. Grant into the clear. Grant is gone. Touchdown, Auburn. 49 yards. And that man hits the sideline. Sign off. He just, it is, I don't know that there's anybody in college football that's going to run him down once he gets going. And he hit, got to the side. Great blocking, great scheme, and touchdown. Corey Grant got to the side. He got to the corner. He got one block, and that's the only block that he needed yep. once he was able to turn it upfield. Coming around, kind of the old Statue of Liberty play, and Jay Frost sealing it mm. right there, and boy, he gets to the outside and just, just goodbye. White to hold for Parkey, and the extra point is on the way, and it is good, and Auburn is four of four in its touchdown drives this afternoon. Corey Grant with the touchdown, his third of the season. Auburn on top against Western Carolina, 28 to three at Jordan-Hare Stadium. to his group on the sideline there and uh, Grant got a great block from Jay Prosh out on the corner and when he got to the sideline and uh, turned it upfield turned those shoulder pads forward it was uh, it was gone you know and Jay right there it was a great block but he didn't just pancake the guy but he knows who he's got running behind him and knows that if, if he can get to the outside and make that guy try to either stop or go around him Corey Grant's gone he's by him and that's kind of what happened Grant already with 72 yards on just three carries this afternoon. Twenty eight to three Tigers on top. Cody Parker with a low line drive that is over the head. And first down and 10 for Western Carolina coming up. At its own 25 yard line. Touchbacks are something that Auburn fans have come accustomed to with Cody Parkey kicking off. You know, you get the feeling he can kind of, if he wants to kick it really high and land at the goal line, he could. And I think it's sometimes they may tell him to do that, but most of the time it's just, just punch it through and let's go play defense. New quarterback for the uh, Catamounts, number 980 Sullivan, a transfer from Marshall, a junior. From Boca Raton, Florida. His brother John is a wide receiver. And he drops the snap. He's going to try and run with it. An open field for Sullivan. And uh, dives at right across the 40 yard line out to the 42. You talk about making the most of the bus play right there. I mean, he that was a split second from being disaster. Gets up and puts a great move, uh, I believe, on Anthony Swain right there and gets, gets 20 yards. First and 10 at the 42 
on the busted play that turned into a, the big gainer for Western Carolina. Sullivan on the season 52 percent in passes. Now 257 yards in rushing. And he looks and he throws and it's almost taken the other way by Anthony Swain and if he holds on to it he's gone. He has nothing in front of him at green and I think he might have known that mm. uh, when, when he stepped in front of it right there and I mean just just picture perfect play by a linebacker Second stepping down. in front of a ball and just could not quite hold on to it. So Sullivan's first pass has almost taken the distance the other way. Trying to get it to Michael Helms Jr. the tight end. Second and 10 from the 42. And Sullivan looks to the sideline. He's running out of time. The play clock is down to two. Just got the playoff on time. And the handoff to number 25, Gary Lewis, and a nice gain for Lewis, taken down at the 49 yard line. Nice run by the young man. Looked like he ran somebody over right around the line of scrimmage. I couldn't, couldn't really tell who that was. And stays on his feet and gets right there with a very manageable third down and a big third down for the Auburn defense. Third down and a three for Western Carolina at the 49 yard line. Lewis and Ramsey flank the quarterback, number nine, Eddie Sullivan. Two of five on third down is Western Carolina. And Sullivan will run it. And he is shy of the first down as he's taken down at midfield by Swain. Really good job by Swain right there. He, he's getting blocked and kind of kind of just swallowed up. Uh, swallowed up Eddie Sullivan right there. Just a sophomore out of Gadsden City. And Western Carolina had fourth and about a yard and a half and the catamounts and Piers will punt this one away with Quan Bray dropping deep to receive for Auburn. Seacrest will kick it away. End over end kick the Bray takes at the 10. A trio of Western Carolina players down there. Devon Richardson among those leading the way for the Catamounts. And Auburn will get first and 10 at its own 13 yard line when we come back. 11.45 to go in the first half. On homecoming at Auburn, the Tigers lead Western Carolina 28 to 3. Tigers on top 28 to 3 1145 to go in the second quarter at Jordan Air Stadium. You can check out the latest Auburn online auction items and place your bid now at AuburnTigers.com. This week's featured auction item is a game used football from the 2010 National Championship season that's signed by head coach Gus Malzahn. Place your bid for this unique piece of Auburn football history. Visit AuburnTigers.com today. Maybe a little surprised that uh, Western Carolina didn't go for it on fourth and about a yard and a half at midfield. Yeah, I, I didn't. I don't really see the downside for that for them. Obviously, trailing uh, pretty big early, and, and Auburn has shown enough potential for big plays that I, I don't know you're gaining a whole lot by trying to push them deep. But you would be gaining a whole lot if you can get that first down and maybe try to get a score on the board. So a little bit surprised there, but uh, you know, that's what they chose to do. Auburn backed up uh, on their 18. Western Carolina Ball Club is at home for the next two contests at home against Wofford on the 19th and Elon on the 26th after today's action. 
from the third day uh, from the 13 first and 10 for Auburn. Play action in the throw to Quan Bray and Bray is run down from behind as he gets out across the 15 yard line by number 94 John Macbeth. The tackle by number 94, John out of Greensboro, North Carolina. Yeah, not, not much room there for Quan right there. Got, got what he could, and, and you know what? It, it still got about five yards and a, a positive play on first yeah. down. Second down and five for Auburn. The ball out to the 18-yard line. As Auburn huddles and maybe two yards behind the line of scrimmage. Grant in motion. Grant with the carry to the outside now cuts it back and Grant is going to get the Auburn first down it would appear Boy, he looked like when he got to get turned around it flashed through his mind if he could have got loose he might have come all the way back across his field and he, with his speed right there he, he might have been able to do it Kristen Gill number seven the outside linebacker made the stop for Western Carolina yeah, coming in here right kind of when he got spun around just couldn't get, couldn't get loose to do it. First and 10 for Auburn from the 24. Johnson with time, looking deep, throws it deep, and it is intercepted at the 26 yard line. Fred Payne, number three, with the uh, interception, the first of Johnson's uh, career. Yeah, and then just, uh, you know, not, not exactly a terrible thing. You got man on man coverage, you give your receiver a chance to make a play on it, but, uh, you know, obviously well underthrown and probably a decision that he wants back. That's another freshman getting an interception against the quarterback freshman, Payne, a freshman from Gainesville, Georgia, 5'10, and uh, he was able just to, to wall off the receiver. Yep. He became the receiver on that play. Yeah, to really give your guy a chance, you got to throw it to the outside where he is, where the, where the defensive back is not. First down and 10 for Western Carolina, and Mitchell is back at the quarterback spot, and a handoff to the tailback, and maybe back to the line of scrimmage, and that is all for number 20, Darius Ramsey, out of Waco, North Carolina. Number 90, Gabe Wright. Well, we've mentioned his name a lot already today, and he had a monster game last week against Ole Miss. Big number 90 for Auburn with the stop. You know, you take a guy that, that has Gabe Wright's talent, and all of a sudden you give him a little bit of confidence. Mm. And, and when those two things meet, you can really see a player take off. 6'3", 296, junior out of Columbus, Georgia. Already with a sack this afternoon as well. Second down and a seven. And movement by the left guard. Tanner Poindexter, I believe. No, Matt DeGraffenry, number 63. All -star. All -star. Offense. Number 63, five drives for the previous spot, just second down. Auburn looked like it was going to bring a blitz on the yep. play, and DeGraffin Reed jumped. Had a lot of different moving parts right up there around the line of scrimmage before he did that, and it just kind of <laughs> more than he could bear, so to speak. So second down in 15 now. As Gary Lewis checks in in a two-back system right now, as he and Ramsey flank Mitchell out of the shotgun. And it's Ramsey with the carry, shy of the original line of scrimmage. He gets to the 25. And Western Carolina has really shown that they 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 believe they can kind of run the ball a little bit. They they are keeping after, keeping at it, and have had uh, moderate success with it. And that has been their offense, a success yeah. this season. Joshua Olsey, number 15 on the stop for Auburn. And Lewis comes out for another receiver, a four-wide set now for Western Carolina. On third and 11. Mitchell looks and throws. And that's intercepted for Auburn. Jonathan Mincy with the interception. And let's see how far Mincy can take this one back. In Western Carolina territory taken down at the 48 yard line. Great job by him, Mincy. Just making the catch. Sometimes when you're that by yourself, that gets tough. But obviously a miscommunication between yeah. quarterback and receiver. Receiver cut the route off, and he throws it deep. And, and nobody there if it's at Jonathan Mincy. Auburn minus two in its turnover ratio coming into this ball game. It's tied for 13th in the SEC. When I talked with Gus Malzahn before the game, he always talks about turnovers. Well, Auburn gets one back here with Mincy. 
Yeah, you can see that. I mean, there's nobody within 20 yards First of him when he catches the ball. And does the best he can. In fact, I was pretty impressed with the stiff arm he gives the offensive lineman at the end of this. He can't quite get away from him. Sean Coleman is set up as a tight end right now. A flag is down. Ricardo Lewis on the catch. And uh, Lewis spun around at the Western Carolina 45 and down to the 42. Fred Payne, cornerback number three, came up to make the stop. He already has an interception. But number 39, Sean Coleman, is getting some work today. Or excuse me, 37, Coleman, is getting some work today at a, at a tight end spot. Offense, number 35, five yards from the previous spot. Still second down. And Jay Prosh called for the penalty. Well, there's nothing like, uh, you know, bringing in an offensive lineman and a tight end to get your best blocking crew on the field, and that's exactly what Auburn's doing. Auburn's a little bit thin at the tight end spot. C.J. Uzama hasn't played much, if at all, in the last couple ball games. Mason in the backfield, and he gets the carry, bounces to the outside, gets a block. Mason down the sideline. Inside the 20, inside the 10, and he's in for the touchdown. Or did he go out of bounds? Nope, touchdown. Oh, touchdown, touchdown. A great run, and really the, the greatest of the run was just the speed to get to the corner, and then he outran a couple guys that had angles on him, and they made a little cut there at the goal line to get in the end zone. Trey Mason, obviously a special back. Over 1,000 yards a year ago for Mason. Took almost the very final carry of his season to get that thousand yards in Alabama. I believe it did. It was the final <laughs> carry that got it for it. Parkey is on for the extra point. The kick is up and the kick is good. Auburn has gone deep on a touchdown pass and it's gone deep on two long runs. One by Corey Grant and this one by Trey Mason. 7.46 to go. First half, Auburn 35, Western Carolina 3. As you get another look at Mason around right end. And just turn on the Jets. Three, Auburn on top with seven minutes and 46 seconds to go in the first half of play. Trey Mason, 53 yards and a touchdown. Just a, a great run. I don't know if you're going to be able to see it or not because the guys were coming from the far. There they are right there. Both guys, when he turned the corner, had an angle on him. Neither one of them able to catch Trey Mason. And again, the, the little jab step cut back at the five. Great job keeping balance and, and just enough to make the guy unsure of where he's going. Great touchdown run. That's the 15th rushing touchdown for Trey Mason this, in his career. Gives him 17 total, two kickoff returns for touchdowns, including one this season. For Mason, the 5'10", 205-pound junior, already on the day, five carries, 98 yards from Palm Beach, Florida. Mason with 98 yards. Corey Grant with 78 yards on the day. They're among the four for Auburn that have each rushed for 100 yards in a game. Mason, Grant, Cameron Artis Payne, and Nick Marshall. First time that's ever happened. Four different 100-yard rushers in a season. And that's pretty special, and that speaks to a lot of depth at that position, depth and talent at the running back position. Cody Parkey to kick it away. No chance for Sean Warren. That one falls eight yards deep into the end zone. And the Catamounts will have first and 10 at their own 25-yard line. 
There are the 100-yard rushers. Grant against West, or Washington State on opening night. Cameron Artis Payne. Trey Mason at LSU. And then Nick Marshall against Ole Miss last week. And the only game not to have one uh, Mississippi State and threw for 330 yep. yards in that game. And they, they did a good job of stopping Auburn's off uh, run, running game that night. And Auburn had to go to the air. First and 10 for the 25. Mitchell with the carry after the bluff handoff to Warren. And Mitchell loses about a half yard. If you want to draw up a textbook uh, play of how to play the read option, uh, Craig Sanders did it right there. I kept his shoulder square to the line of scrimmage and, and just scrunched down and really didn't give him a correct read. And when he kept the ball, fell back in and, and made the tackle. Great, great play. Sanders, the... Senior from Clio, Alabama, 6'4", 245. Second down and 10. Mitchell, quarterback draw and tripped by Casanova McKenzie. And who would good to see him play. Yeah, I mean, the, the last time he was on this field, he was carted off on a stretcher. Just last week. Yeah. That, that, is, that is so good to see him back in the game. You know they're going to use him sparingly. Uh, don't want to get anything back going, but get him just in the game enough to get him yeah. get him reps and a great job making it. He was able to return to the sideline last week, and that was good to see and practiced all week long. All right, third and 10 for Western Carolina. Four wide set, the handoff. And this is Warren. And back across the line of scrimmage, maybe three yards, and that's about all. Yeah, nice play by Jake Collin, Re reading what was going on, filling the gap, and making the tackle. Fourth down eight. And a punting situation for Western Carolina with both Trevon Reed and Quan Bray dropping deep to receive, and Sechrist will kick it away. It was interesting last time, really a similar punt to the to the first one, but but nobody fair caught it, and it cost Auburn about 20 yards. Juan Bray from the 31-yard line, and he lost a couple yards, and is taken down inside the 30-yard line. Number 59, Char Chandler Addison with the stop. Forty-yard punt by Sechrist, who has been busy in this first half of play. He has been busy. Actually, I think the punt I was talking about was, was two punts ago, but uh, short punt, and Trevon uh, didn't catch that one. Was trying to block for, for Bray, and it kind of hit him between them and rolled about 20 yards. But uh, catch that one, just uh, couldn't get his feet underneath him on the return. Sovereign drive will open up at its own 29-yard line. Johnson to Trey Mason. Mason throws one player down and then is taken out of bounds. Jaleel Larquette. The tackle by number two. Jaleel I don't know if Trey might have been better served just to kind of stick his nose in there and get what he could get. <laughs> but uh, try, yeah, try, tried to, yeah, he did it. Wow. Yeah, get out of my Second way. Hit him right on the helmet and threw him down. But uh, that might make more highlight reels than a four-yard game. That was true. Sir Sertonius Harris. On the uh, end of that, Johnson looks and throws for Ricardo Lewis out of the break and uh, incomplete on the play. Fred Payne was defending for Western Carolina, and it's going to bring up third down and eight for Auburn. And uh, some kind of miscommunication right there. Ricardo kind of came out of his break and stopped, and, and obviously Jeremy Johnson thinking he was going to keep going and running the corner route. And I don't know uh, who's at fault right there, but uh, some, something happened weird. Third down and eight for Auburn at its own 31-yard line. Johnson steps up and throws to Melvin Ray, and Ray's got the first down. Breaks free out to the 45-yard line of Western Carolina, and a Tiger first down. And a pretty good little spin move when he caught that ball. I tell you, it, it wasn't in his hands a split second. He had wheeled and, and got upfield right there. Great job of making defensive back miss and, and getting himself another 15 more yards. Sir Tony Harris made the stop. Jaleel Lorquette was the one that whiffed on the tackle to the 45 of Western Carolina.
First and ten for the Tigers in Western Carolina territory. Johnson throws and a nice catch near the first down marker again Melvin Ray. Melvin Ray not a catch all year long coming in and made three very nice catches that one. Very very good hands reaching up not worried about the lick that he knew was coming and uh, making a great play. Ten yards 44 yards on the day for Ray on three catches. Johnson with time to throw. And his first running attempt will be just a couple of yards. And a much better job right there. He, 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 kind of the same situation when he threw the interception back. Nobody's open and he's got plenty of time. And instead of just just kind of throwing it up, you know what? Tuck it. See what you can get. And let's go to the next play. Kristen Gill, John McBeth combined on the stop. Three yards on the gain, however, from the 32 second down for Auburn. A 35 to three Auburn lead. Under 320 to go in the first quarter or first half. Johnson slant throws incomplete behind the intended receiver Tony Stevens or Quet was the one that was defending on the play yeah, and a flag is down had him by a step and just stood on the back shoulder and, and, and I bet you that Tony Stevens in his uh, honest moments will tell you he'd love to come up with that when he was still offense, but it was it was thrown behind him. 10 yards from the previous spot still second down. Greg Robinson who has had a marvelous season for Auburn at left tackle. The sophomore from Thibodeau Louisiana called for the hold. You know of all the weapons that Auburn has I don't know that those five guys yeah. are probably aren't the best. One. Robinson Kozan Dismuke Slade Patrick Miller second has down. started and young got the start today at that right tackle spot. Johnson throws it's the screen. And a nice man or Tony Stevens makes one man miss and gets some of the yardage back from the holding penalty as he gets to the 36 and a half yard line. Yeah, third, third and 11 or 12 is, is not uh, a wonderful down and distance but it beats third and 17 or 18. So get yourself into somewhat of a manageable third down and and uh, try to get enough and you may be thinking too if I can just get six or seven and make it a field goal on the board. Sir Tony as Harris made the stop. Kristen Gill missed. On Tony Stevens. Third and 11 for Auburn. Tigers are perfect today at three of three on third down. Johnson looks and throws. It's complete to Mason, shy of the first down. And he's taken down at the 30 yard line by Trey Morgan, the cornerback. Number 26 out of North Augusta, Georgia, just a freshman. There's a lot of youth on this Western Carolina roster, and a lot of them get a lot of playing time. Bound to pay off in the future. And here's fourth down, and Auburn will go for it on fourth and five. Johnson on the rollout throws. Marcus David has it. Davis has it for a first down. And uh, taken down at the 42 yard. I just rolled the pocket that time, Gabe. Uh, rolled the pocket and a great job of, of throwing on the run, put it right where he needed to put it. Marcus Davis is running out in the flat and just putting it right there where he can catch it and get upfield and get the first down. Four down territory pays off for Auburn. First and 10 for the Tigers at the Western Carolina 22 yard line. Play action throw across the middle. That is a Stevens. And Stevens dives into the end zone for the touchdown. Well, that's what happens when you put the ball in the right spot and give your receivers to catch it in stride. He's able to get through the middle of the field and then stretch out uh, for his first career touchdown, I believe, at Auburn. Great job by Jeremy Johnson. Great job by Tony Stevens. 20 yards on the pickup and the touchdown. And Auburn, excuse me, 22 yards. And that was the 10th play of the Auburn drive, going 61 yards. Third touchdown pass of the day now for Jeremy Johnson. Parkey with the extra point. And perfect. I could be wrong about this, but uh, if you look back, uh, let me say, I know from myself, uh, there hasn't been a freshman uh, that has had a good a game as Jeremy Johnson has had, a true freshman, uh, even in the first half. I mean, three touchdowns and uh, just, a, just a very, very relaxed looking Jeremy Johnson right here. Puts it right on the money. Tony Stevens, get upfield, stretch it out, touchdown, having a really, really good first half. Stretched Ace Clark, who had a good look at him at the two yard line and just was able to fall forward into the end zone for the touchdown. Nice second effort that time by 
The freshman Tony Stevens out of Orlando Florida 6'4 190. And uh, Auburn is spreading around of the the offense here this afternoon. Yeah they really have we've had uh, all kind of people catch passes eight different receivers for Auburn catch passes and I believe all three touchdowns have been to have been to different receivers another half Prosh uh, had one Tony Stevens had one and I believe Ricardo Lewis was was the third and uh, Jeremy Johnson has looked very very comfortable and of course we mentioned the five guys earlier when you got five guys that are giving you basically as much time as you need to make a decision that is a that is a just a unbelievable benefit to any quarterback but especially to a young one. a look at the numbers today so far for Jeremy Johnson 13 of 17 183 yards three touchdowns and an interception in the first half it's Parkey kicks this one away and uh, no opportunity again for Sean Warren and the return team for Western Carolina and with a minute 38 to go in the first quarter of play excuse me first half Western Carolina will get the ball back. 42 to 3 Auburn on top. Auburn has scored a touchdown on every drive of the first half. Pretty impressive. Very 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 Excuse me. With with the exception of the interception. Yeah, yeah that's with right. one. That's that's right. But still but executing against a team you know you're probably better than don't take them lightly come in do what you need to do in the first half of a football game and that's what Auburn's done. Gary Lewis in the backfield along with Eddie Sullivan back at the quarterback spot for Western Carolina and Lewis in motion as Sullivan drops the pass and throws the slant route to Willie police and police is quickly taken down on the play by Chris Davis number 11 very sure tackle and I know Auburn has emphasized tackling in the secondary all year long has done a, done a really good job with it for most of the year and Chris Davis right there one on one as soon as he catches the ball, tackle him. Don't let him get any more yards. 21st catch of the year for a police. Gain of three, second down from the 28. A minute six and counting in the second quarter. Hand off and nothing doing. Absolutely nothing going on up the middle. No Igwe, I believe, in there making that tackle and just didn't do, did, didn't slow him down at all. And and. Very nice to see him on the inside making plays. Uh, kind of a new position for him. Right. He, he has been, you know, the last week coaches said, boy, he really played well. He didn't see him making a play. Igwe moved from defensive end to defensive tackle. I thought he just watched his, his body language last week. Kind of a new lease on life yep. for Nosa at that tackle spot. Half minute to go in the first half. Auburn on top 42 to 3. Here's third and eight for Western Carolina from its own 27 yard line. And off again to Lewis, and he may lose a couple yards on the play. Yeah, nothing doing right there. I believe that was Chris Fall. Yeah, number 17. Filling that hole, and boy, I tell you what, he just uh, he put a stop to the train right there. And a dominating first half of play for Auburn on a homecoming Saturday at Jordan Hare Stadium. Auburn scores on every drive except one, and the Tigers keep Western Carolina out of the end zone at the break. Auburn 42, Western Carolina 3. Any last requests, Mr. Baldwin? Mind grabbing my phone and opening the Capital One purchase eraser? I need to redeem some venture miles before my demise. Okay. It's easy to erase any recent travel expense I want. Just pick that flight right there, mm -hmm. give it a few taps, and it's taken care of. This is pretty easy, and I see it works on hotels, too. You bet. Now, if you like that, press the red button on top. How did he not see that coming? What's in your wallet? This is the Capital One Halftime Report. Welcome into the ESPN3 Halftime Report presented by Capital One. I'm John Brickley. Coming up, we'll join the ESPN Goal Line Network in progress. That'll get you up to date with all the action that's going on today. Goal Line features unlimited live cut-ins, highlights, and analysis from the biggest matchups throughout the day. But first, let's take a look at this week's Capital One Cup impact performance from Thursday night. And what a game it was for Eastern Illinois quarterback Jimmy Garoppolo in the 63-7 win over Austin Peay. Garoppolo threw for 306 yards, was responsible for six touchdowns, including five through the air. The senior QB also breaking EIU's record for total offense, previously held by one Sean Payton, who has proven he knows a thing or two about offense 
in the NFL. As promised, we'll get you updated with everything that's going on today as we join the Goal Line Network in progress. A reminder that Goal Line is available through participating TV providers and live on Watch ESPN. Huge play here for Missouri. Second and nine. Can they keep the clock moving with three and a half to go? A deep pass here, and it's Green Beckham coming back to the ball and making the catch. You asked about where he was, and they found him there with the smaller corners. Shaq Wiggins trying to defend the six foot five inch receiver, a 20 yard gain. And the thing is, you don't have to throw a perfect ball, just throw it out there. If it's, if it's anywhere in the area, these guys, Washington and Green Beckham, are going to get up with their physical body and make a play on it. That's as good an offense as you could possibly have. And again, just one time out, George can't stop that clock, got to let it run. Missouri with the field goal would. Push it to a two possession game. Yeah, you want to run it three times in a row right here and burn the clock. And Mock will. Trying to stay in bounds. But he stepped out inside the 10. Pretty good run though. Got five yards. But the clock stops at 2.51. That's a poor mistake there by Mock though. Just got to take a seat once you uh, get outside there. I think he was trying to get down. He got hit and he just kind of went, went out of bounds. There's James Franklin. Oh boy. Again, the injured shoulder. And what does this mean going forward? Missouri hangs on and wins this game. How long have you lost your quarterback? We saw Connor Shaw get hurt a few weeks ago. He came right back and played, so we don't speculate on the length of the injury, but obviously done for today. Well, you hope that uh, that it's not not too lengthy. Play clock at two. Inside the five and touchdown Josie. A seven-yard touchdown run, and Missouri leads it by two scores just outside two minutes remaining. Great blocking on the left side by Justin Britt, Max Copeland, and then Rameek Wilson, 51, the linebacker, just runs around it, and great vision. So Matty Mock, who's thrown for more yards than anybody in high school history, his college career off to a pretty good start. Can OU creep closer on ABC? Going to the far corner of the end zone. Out of the end zone, incomplete. Jazz Reynolds. Double move, he had him. Throw that to the back pylon, just a little bit too far. Had what they wanted. Had the corner who bit on the fake, just threw the ball too far out of the corner of the end zone. Third down and eight. Complete. Fourth down. And that was a good throw by Blake Bell. The play before he threw it out of the field of play. That one was a very catchable pass that Jazz Reynolds just didn't handle. If he catches this, he might be able to stick it forward for a first down. can get a first down without scoring here just inside the one oh, did they get the playoff or not oh my god no excuse for that down there None. Well, that you changes cannot things do that dramatically I mean you go from fourth wow fourth and seven with a chance to get a first down inside the one if you don't score the fourth and 12. Saunders slotted to the right. In trouble. Texas football, 5.15 to go after the Jeff Coach sack. Number 44, senior from Plano who has never experienced a win over Oklahoma as a Texas Longhorn with a sack on fourth down. Just a four-man rush. Both ends collapse the pocket. Jeff Coe got the sack, but Cedric Reed coming from the other side. 
He crunched it also. They beat both tackles and got the sack on fourth down. Boy, what a costly, costly delay a gay penalty, though, prior to that. Capital One Studio update. South Carolina set the tone early in this ballgame, running the football. Brendan Nosevich, seven-yard touchdown round. South Carolina up 52-7 behind the ground game. That is the third quarterback South Carolina has used today. Missouri State, North Dakota State, the two-time defending champions in the FCS were actually down before that play, but the Bison have taken the lead. It's 17-13 as we approach halftime at the Fargo Dome. Well, we saw a delay a game for Oklahoma and then a sack on the very next play. The good hands play from Allstate, a Case McCoy touchdown that really put it out of reach for the Horns today, John. What a grab. What a performance by Texas defense and Mike Davis, you're seeing number one. Here's the, here's the big play, wide receiver for Texas. Been a dominant performance, 16 point ball game, four minutes left in the fourth. Texas can line up and bleed some clock here and I think Mac Brown could be pretty excited about this performance. Keep in mind Texas now getting deeper into their conference schedule here. A lot of things are going to change. This is going to shake up the Big 12 race. Don't forget about Baylor as well. Baylor's for real. Yeah, we're on ABC here with the horns in front. And remember, Mac said it himself. We're one and two, but our goal is still in front of us. We want to win the Big 12. This will certainly help that cause. It's been one in the trenches. This game is a physical contest, and it's been one up front by Texas on both sides of the ball. So Mac Brown. So former Longhorn great, Major Applewhite, you said you've loved his game plan today. They're in command. Mizzou all over Georgia. Bulldogs can only stop the clock once. Their national title hopes appear to be 56 seconds away from going poof. They didn't have heart or passion today. The problem is the margin for error is razor thin. And when you have three turnovers, you fumble the ball twice. You had a sack fumble, and then that last interception from Mara Murray. You're not going to be able to overcome that. And another pick thrown by Murray. Brother steps in front of that pass. Missouri will take over and win the ball game. <laughs> Kentrell Brothers with his third interception. That's now 13 picks on the season for Missouri, most in the country. And this is a team to watch, folks, in the SEC. Their first road win against the top 10 team since 1981. It was AM last year that surprised people in the SEC coming for the Big 12. It's Missouri in 2013. And the only thing that they're worried about leaving Athens today is their quarterback, is the health of their quarterback. And it's a big question mark. It's a big reason. What happened to him a year ago with the torn labrum and concussions and MCLs and all those things? If Missouri is going to continue to threaten in the SEC East, he's got to get healthy and healthy in a hurry because the Gators are coming to Columbia. And Florida's got that big one with LSU later today. South Carolina beat Arkansas. So they're two and one. We've got South Carolina at Tennessee. The new game on ESPN next Saturday. That's a great win for Missouri. We give credit to Missouri's defense. Those pass rushers, Sam, Ely, Golden, they can get after it. Big reason why they won the game today. One of the biggest wins in recent history for the Missouri Tigers. Gary Pinkle's team still unbeaten, 6-0 and and for real in the SEC. And Georgia's slim hopes of being in the national championship picture essentially end with the second loss. Previous loss just by three to Clemson, but obviously with the injuries, and the loss today, still a shot to win the SEC, but not the national title. Here's Tom. Coach, a tough road contest. You get your quarterback dinged, hostile environment. What do you have to say for your team's performance today? We battled, you know, we battled. Turnovers obviously were huge in this game, as they are in any big close game. And uh, 
you know, they played great defense, a good offense in the third quarter, and that fourth quarter, we got the momentum finally back on our side, but uh, uh, it was a battle. How would you assess the performance of your front four on defense today? Well, they, you know, they, they're very competitive. We, we play a lot of guys in there, seven, eight guys, and, uh, you know, they're just, they're relentless, and they, I thought they did a lot of good things. You're a confident team coming in. Now you look at the stretch going forward, but you've got some games in Columbia. What does this mean for your football team to get this win today? Well, I, these guys, these guys battle, man. This is a special group of guys, and I said that this summer, so I'm really proud of them, and you know what? We haven't played our best game yet. We still get better. Congratulations, Coach. Thank you. Obviously, we'll wait and see about the status of James Franklin going forward as Missouri will return to Columbia with three straight home games. How about that? So Missouri wins the latest on Franklin, strained really shoulder, x-rays negative. UConn's going to go 96 and yards in a buck 46. Chandler Whitmer is in the gun. Joyce, taking the easy pass catch made by Fox. Did not get out of bounds, did not get a first down. It's an eight-yard gain. Time continues. Again, you need a little sense of urgency. I see Tim Boyle, he's kind of, he's very casual quarterback in general, how I watch him. Get this drive spinning and rolling. Look right like Forte jumped over the middle. Dangerous pass, and this time again, it's dropped. No, no interception. D.D. Lattimore had his hands on it. Johnny Ward was there as well. No flag on that. Oh, defense. oh. Well, that's what they say with the linebacker position. You know, they pretty much might as well not have hands because they don't catch many, but that was one. That was a gift he that, served up to him. That last comment was from Anthony Becht. I don't want to offend linebackers. I'm not scared, heck. Be plenty of them, that's for All sure. All right, third and two now. Huskies, just one timeout left. McCombs not out there. Looking for Fox. And again, he had... Jeremy Davis wide open coming around on the curl route there. A little curious why McCombs hasn't been out there on this series. Wonder if he got hurt on that punt return. Well, pass protection, I believe, is the is the big thing. Uh, Hypolite's one of those guys that can protect well. You see him, he's coming into the game now, but uh, like I said, Jeremy Davis was open on that play there, and, and, and Tim Boyle wasn't able to, to find that read. Miscommunication if they can get it. They're giving a lot of coverage on third and short, and they get it to McQuillan. So they get the first down. Now they got to be ready to go. Lattimore with another tackle. Clyde in on the play as well. An eight yard gain. One oh five and running. Lynch had a shot. It's incomplete, which almost at that point is a good thing for Connecticut because McQuillan would have been well short of the first down. It does. It stops the clock. So now with 54 seconds, second and 10, you're way back. You really have to think about if, if you get a completion, get to the line. I, we need to see a little more speed as you get closer. Not even near the 50-yard line yet, so they have a lot of work to do. We are not there yet, obviously, but Chad Christian's career high is from 50 yards. Hit as he throws, throws it high, and this one dropped again and again. It's D.D. Lattimore in on the play. Not the first man there, but he had a chance on the deflection. Yeah, and uh, he just throws this ball high. Gets hit late. Ball's up in the air, gets tipped up. You heard Chuck Bresnahan talk about it. Those tips, those are where the... The opportunity he's come, and now in the third and long, got to convert. That was Sager with the pressures. He has had a huge game. Now McQuillan's got to head up field and get the first down, which he does. And that'll stop the clock. Again, Kristen's longest field goal made of his career is from 50. Need to get lined up. Let's go. And it was against South Florida on November 3rd last year. And here the crowd getting restless. They're like, come on, let's go. Another dangerous throw, another dropped interception. Now, if you're South Florida, you got to make these. Plays. We hope you enjoyed the fast action coverage from the Goal Line Network. We'll continue to provide this service every Saturday throughout the entire college football season. That'll do it for the ESPN3 halftime report presented by Capital One. I'm John Brickley. Enjoy the second half.
Here's to being one of one, a true one of a kind. They play at Columbia, though. But I think Florida's defense is better. I think they'll take the crowd out of it. Gary Pickle, nice for him to get a win after a disastrous first year in the SEC. He's with our Tom Luganville on the field. Coach, a tough road contest. You get your quarterback dinged, hostile environment. What do you have to say for your team's performance today? We battled, you know, we battled. Turnovers, obviously, were huge in this game, as they are in any big close game. And, uh, you know, they played great defense, a good offense in the third quarter. And that fourth quarter, we got the momentum finally back on our side. But uh, uh, it was a battle. How would you assess the performance of your front four on defense today? Well, they, you know, they, they're very competitive. We, we play a lot of guys in there, seven, eight guys. And, uh, you know, they're just, they're relentless. And they, I thought they did a lot of good things. You're a confident team coming in now you look at the stretch going forward but you've got some games in columbia what does this mean for your football team to get this win today well I, these guys these guys battle man I mean, this is a special group of guys and i said that this summer so i'm really proud of them and you know what we haven't played our best game yet we still get better gary pinkle with tom luganville there on the field after the win again your final score for all those playing at home 41 to 26 college game day on espn radio time for game notes Everything you need to know for today's games. Game notes. Penn State coming off a surprising defeat. Number 18, Michigan at Penn State. The Nittany Lions struggled to run the ball at Indiana last week, only rushing for 70 yards on 31 attempts and only have 61 scholarship players on their roster. And despite that, I've heard a few people pick Penn State to knock off Michigan this week, which is clearly for one reason, which is that Michigan's looked awful the last few weeks. And we, we saw them almost lose to Akron, almost lose to UConn. And they're still undefeated, but they don't feel like an undefeated team. I think today is going to be a big test for Michigan as far as what are they going to do with their quarterback, Devin Gardner? Yeah, he had made a lot of mistakes that had contributed to those games being close when they probably shouldn't have. Last week, they chose to take the ball out of his hands for the most part against Minnesota and just run it. I wonder if they can just run it and beat Penn State or whether they're finally going to have to turn Gardner loose and allow him to make plays. I, they might be able to win the Penn State game without him, but if they're going to have a great season, Devin Gardner is going to have to get back to being a playmaker. Stanford on the road after last week's win against Washington. Number five, Stanford at Utah. The Cardinal defense was not impressive last week, allowing 489 yards passing to Washington quarterback Keith Price. But I think that's less the Stanford defense being unimpressive than it was Keith Price and the Washington offense being very impressive. We've seen some of the top defenses in the country this year really struggle when quarterbacks have gotten hot. And... When you talk about quarterbacks, Travis Wilson. Stadium Auburn on top, 42-3 to against Western Carolina. Auburn put up numbers in the first half that, that many teams would be, happy of, would be happy with in any ball game. And uh, now the second half will play, and you, you want to continue to execute, it would be my guess here, Dave Gross. Uh, want to continue to execute, play well here in the second half of play. Obviously, avoid injuries at this point. Yeah, continue to execute. You, you're probably going to start to see a, a lot, a lot of substitutes. I don't know if Auburn will keep first teams in the first series or not, but uh, a lot of substitutes and then still keeping an eye on Jeremy Johnson. He needs to get as much game experience as possible and uh, how much they will continue to go with him and, and probably going to see Jonathan Wallace at some point in this ball game. I would guess, although uh, if you're trying to get uh, – Johnson as much experience as possible. You may not. I, I don't know. But something tells me that you'll see Jonathan Wallace work over this. Auburn will kick it off to open the second half. A reminder to you that Western Carolina won the toss in the first half and uh, de deferred. And uh, Auburn took that drive immediately down the field and scored. And uh, Western Carolina will get the first crack here in the second half of play. Boy, it's been just a gorgeous homecoming afternoon from a, a weather perspective. I'm not sure you could have asked much more no. out of this homecoming Saturday. Absolutely, really absolutely perfect. It, it's not been too hot, but, but warm and sunny, not a cloud in the sky. Well, maybe two or three clouds in the <laughs> sky, but not much to speak of. 
And we await the kickoff of the second half by Cody Parkey. And Parkey just has been a, a regular at putting the ball in the end zone. Sean Warren is among those deep to receive for the Catamounts. And it does not matter who Western Carolina has deep to receive. Catamounts will open first and 10 at their own 25 yard line. And we'll see if the Catamounts are able to mount a drive here. In the second half, one one really sustained drive in the first half, and that resulted in the 49-yard field goal by Richard Sigmund. And still see most of the starters out there, kind of a, a sprinkling of some yep. guys that uh, are getting in the game for the first time. Eddie Sullivan will start the second half at quarterback for the Catamounts. The transfer from Marshall, a junior at 6'1", 200 pounds. And the handoff to Sean Warren, and he is swarmed under. Immediately, Carl Lawson is there for Auburn, the SEC Freshman of the Week. And also, I, I, I think I saw Kenneth Carter kind of bust through there and, and, and get him off his path. Another good job of getting penetration. Second and 11, a loss of one for Warren on first down. Sullivan on the roll, looks and he throws, and it is incomplete. Terry and Robinson, the 5'8 or 5'11, 185 pound freshman from Decatur, Georgia, the intended target for Sullivan. And it's third down now for Western Carolina, which was two of nine on third down. Jonathan Ford on the coverage right there. Young young running back that came in out of high school that uh, Coach Malzahn and staff mm -hmm. have moved to defensive back and pretty good coverage on the play. Not out of the realm that he might not get some work in the future. At tailback for the yep. moment for the moment though he is he is in there on defense for Auburn third and 11 for Western Carolina. Sullivan a short drop and he throws incomplete. Pass intended for Carnaris Benson sophomore out of Atlanta Georgia leading receiver for Western Carolina and it's three and out for the Catamounts. On their initial drive of the second half of play. And doing deep uh, defensively what you need to do come out you're still executing still got a game to play a half of football to play come out strong do what you need to do get the offense back back with the football Clark Seacrest averaged 41.2 yards on his four punts in the first half of play with both Bray and Reed to receive this punt left footed low line drive kick. And Bray watches it bounce and takes one bounce and heads out of bounds. And Auburn will open its first drive, first down and 10 at its own 29 yard line after a 47 yard punt by Seacrest. And a very good job of directional kicking. Yeah. Right there. I mean, and they, right. They've done a decent job today of kicking away from the Auburn return game, Quan yeah. Bray primarily. So first down for Auburn. A three wide set for Jeremy Johnson. First and 10 at the 29. Johnson the handoff. Nope, Johnson will run it. And Jeremy with a move and knocked out of bounds at the 36 yard line. Caleb Hawkins running him out of bounds and a uh, good job getting yardage not not taking a hit uh, by Jeremy John. A gain of seven for Johnson second down and three from the Auburn 36. And the throw it is complete to Ricardo Lewis first down makes one man. Well, he didn't miss, but he was able to get past Trey Morgan enough for the first down. And we should note that uh, Sean Coleman, who was wearing number 37 earlier as a tight end, is now back out there at left tackle <laughs> for Auburn. A little uniform swap in the, in the middle in the middle of the halftime. No big deal. Do a little bit of everything. Redshirt freshman, of course, battled cancer and now back out there for the Tigers. First and ten from the 46. Johnson play action floats it. It's complete. Bray 
Quan inside Western Carolina territory and uh, taken down at the 46 yard line by Circonius Harris from Mableton, Georgia, six foot 190 and a sophomore. Where's number four? And Jeremy known for having a big arm, but just those little touch pass out there to Quan Bray right there. Very nice. Uh, Going to be a good quarterback. You can't just rifle it in there every time. You got to have to touch and had a nice touch on that one. Eight yards on first down to the Western Carolina 46. Corey Grant with the carry. And Grant upended at the 40 yard line, but that's enough for an Auburn first down. Kristen Gill, number seven, with the stop. Six foot 215 junior from Bridgeport, Connecticut. And this drive really taking on the feel of pretty much every drive in the first half. They won Auburn executing what they need to do and, and, and just marching right down the field. Payne is in. And a slot gauge Batten is in at the H back for the Tigers. And the handoff goes to Cameron Artis Payne. And Payne stays on his feet. And he's down to the 16 yard line before he's taken down. Cameron Artis Payne is just a bull when he's still a bowling ball when he gets the ball and gets rolling. He, just, he runs behind his pads, does a great job of breaking tackles and finding holes and just keeping his legs and feet turning and just powering through for a great run. I don't know, 20, 25 yards. Trey Morgan on the stop, and there's an injured Western Carolina player down, and I think it's the one that just dove at the feet. Is that number four, Circonius Harris? He is at least up on his knees and getting help from the Western Carolina training staff. Auburn's first drive of the second half, 11.50 to go in the third. Auburn 42, Western Carolina 3. Forty two to three Auburn on top as Sertonius Harris has helped off the field. He's had a busy afternoon for Western Carolina nine tackles already on the day for Harris and uh, hopefully he returns. We we're looking at his lower back and that long run by Cameron Artis Payne. When play resumes, Auburn will have first and ten and at the Western Carolina 16 yard line. And the score just announced at the stadium. Wow. Missouri did go ahead and beat Georgia, so a big, big upset in the SEC East. Well, Missouri right now in the driver's seat of the SEC East at 2 and 0. They really are. I hadn't even thought about that. Wow. Of course, they got a long road to go, but uh, that's one big step. That's one big hurdle cleared. That is, that is a really big hurdle. Five wide set for Auburn on first and 10 from the 16. Johnson throws. Ricardo Lewis with the catch, and Auburn's going to lose a couple yards out of this one. One of the very few times today that Auburn has gone backwards. Yeah, not many negative plays. Right. Oh, that, that may be the first negative play that I can think of. Maybe a run didn't get much uh, somewhere in there, but not many negative plays at all. You are correct. Back to the 19-yard line. The play loses three yards. Chambers on the stop for Western Carolina. Second and 14 for Auburn. Payne to the backfield. 
Johnson with the big hole and the carry. Nice stutter step. And Johnson dives to the end zone. I think and out of bounds. Out. Yep. They'll now knock, mark him out of bounds at around the four yard line. But it's enough for a first down, and it will be first and goal for the Tigers. Bryson Jordan, number 22, outside linebacker. And a great job right there. Jimmy Johnson did, did a couple things that I really like. Number one, he made the correct read on whether to pull or, 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 yeah, to pull or give it, and he pulls it and keeps it himself and then has enough awareness to kind of set up a fake right there, not just out of control running, but under control, which he's been all day long. First and goal from the three for Auburn. Bray, the man in motion. Johnson looks, throws. Two Bray touchdown. Bray in motion to the to the line of scrimmage and then reversed it back to the outside. You know what? That's just a, a textbook brought up play down the goal line so many times. Just run out in the flat, run toward the pylon, roll the quarterback to you. Hit you in stride. It's a touchdown. Second career touchdown for Quan Bray. Cody, Cody Parkey. Out for the extra point. Ryan White the hold the kick is up and the kick is good. The kick is good. 10 minutes, 10 minutes and 12 seconds, seconds to go in the third, third quarter. 49 to 3 Auburn the Tigers as they did in the first half score on their first drive of the second half. Juan Bray the man in motion then reversed his field on the receiving end of the touchdown from Jeremy Johnson. Johnson's fourth touchdown of the day. 49 to 3 Auburn. Here's Bubble. Game is being brought to you by Red Diamond, the official coffee and tea of Auburn Athletics. Drink fresh, drink Red Diamond. 49 to 3, Auburn on top at Jordan Hare Stadium on homecoming. Juan Bray wears number four. He's the fourth different receiver with a touchdown catch on the day. And again, just Jeremy Johnson under control, knowing what he needs to do. Good route by Quan Bray. Basically, 10 receiver just running right at the pylon, and that's what he did. Put it, put it out there for him. And he down. Eight different receivers for Auburn have caught the ball today in the Jeremy Johnson's first start, and he's thrown to four different receivers on touchdowns for the afternoon. And Johnson, in his first collegiate start, 17 of 21, 201 yards, four touchdowns, one interception. He has done what you would hope that he would be able to do in this first ball game. Parkey will kick it off. And out of the back of the end zone on the fly. He does what he would hope he would do. Yes, indeed. So first and 10 for Western Carolina at its own 35, or excuse me, one of its own 25 yard line. And we have seen both quarterbacks out there today for the Catamounts. And Sullivan remains in the ball game for Western Carolina. In Western Carolina from the 25. Started eight games last year. Transferred for Marshall, did play after his freshman season at Marshall. One step drop and throws and incomplete. Pass was accurate to Seth Curtis, but he couldn't hold on to the ball. A redshirt freshman from Murphy, North Carolina. 
And the freshman Cameron Melton trailing on the play right there. Cameron, Cameron's been, uh, he's gotten some playing time different years. And, uh, a little, bit hobbled, off, yeah, a little bit hobbled as he comes off the, the field. Fortunately for Auburn, we haven't seen that very often here this afternoon. He'll get some medical attention on the sideline. Second and ten. Sullivan drops. He was in pressure. He completes the pass, however, to Carnoris Benson, who's still on his feet into Auburn territory and down at the 40-yard line. And really not bad coverage right there. A, 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 just a better throw and catch. And then breaks a couple tackles, which we haven't seen much today, but uh, did right there. And I believe that's Western Carolina's biggest play of the game. Pretty good pressure by Auburn. Jonathan Ford helped bring down Benson, but a big gainer out to the 40 yard line of 35 yards. Lewis and Warren are the backs along with Eddie Sullivan. Sullivan sets and drops almost a one handed catch. Pass intended over there for Terry and Robinson. And that was almost a highlight reel catch reaching down with one hand around his shoelaces trying to bring it back just couldn't quite quite bring it in. Second and 10 for the Catamounts at the Auburn 40 yard line. Lewis the lone tailback. Three wide outs for the Catamounts on second down. Sullivan throws an incomplete. Pass intended for Stefan Hill. That was almost intercepted by Auburn. It was, I believe, that was TJ, TJ Davis or Brandon King. One of the two out there on that edge, and, and uh, he really almost beat uh, both those guys out there. Almost, almost had a shot at that one. King number 29, Davis number 28. Here's third and 10 from the 40. Sullivan calling signals out of the shotgun. In some trouble. Down he goes. He really had nowhere to go. He, he really didn't and, and really just kind of fell down on his own as the pocket was kind of coming around behind him. Kind of hit the panic button, didn't have anywhere to go and just kind of gave the sack, gave the sack up. Justin Delaney with the sack for Auburn. Big loss on the play of seven yards in its fourth down and punting situation. And uh, Seacrest will be out to punt it away. Seacrest will try to pin Auburn deep. End over end kick that Bray lets bounce. It takes a neutral bounce and down at the 14 yard line. And Auburn will open up first down and 10 at its own 14. 8.26 to go, third quarter. Auburn 49, Western Carolina 3. He's. Basketball will host a fun fan day tomorrow, October 13th, 4 p.m. at Auburn Arena. The event is free to the public. will feature a team scrimmage, inflatable games for kids, free pizza while supplies last, a team autograph session, and more. For more information, visit AuburnTigers.com, and you can buy your season tickets 
for the 2013-14 women's basketball season. Right now, prices are just are as low as $50. Be a part of the action as head coach Terry Williams, Illinois, leads the Tigers for another exciting season at Auburn Arena. For more information or to purchase her tickets, call 855-AUB-2010 or visit obtix.com. First and 10 for Auburn at its own 14, and we may see Jonathan Wallace out there for the first time this afternoon for the Tigers. I think Jeremy Johnson passed the test. <laughs> I would say so. His entrance exam was, uh, he passed it with flying colors this afternoon. How many bad days you have when you throw four touchdown passes? And Jonathan Wallace is in there, a true sophomore from Phoenix City, went to Central High School, 6'2", 206, started the final four games for Auburn a year ago. He is in that fraternity along with Gabe Gross, now Jeremy Johnson, a true freshman starting for Auburn. And uh, a carry across the 15-yard line for Auburn. Cameron Artis Payne, look at Wallace, a very, very limited action this season. Just one of two for 20 yards. Second down and eight for Auburn. Pain the tail back for the Tigers, flanked alongside the sophomore, Jonathan Wallace. Payne will get the carry and bounces to the outside and he's into the clear. And it's now a foot race. He makes one man miss and down to the 25 yard line. Jaleel Lorquette made the touchdown saving tackle on Cameron Artis Payne. I tell you what, Cameron Artis Payne, I talked about it being a bowling ball last time, and he's got a little explosion to him too. When he hits that outside, boy, he turns it on and just couldn't quite outrun the angle right there, but a great job. And even, even when he gets to him, Cameron Artis still gets another 15 yards. 59 yards on the carry for number 44 to the 25 yard line. He and Trey Mason now at 100 yards or more, and Payne is Auburn's leading rusher now with 108 with that 59-yard carry. And Payne remains in the ballgame. Batten in motion. Wallace with the throw and incomplete, a little bit in front of Ricardo Lewis. Yeah, it may have been a little bit in front of him, but Ricardo needs to catch that ball. Pretty good throw, and actually in that route, Boy, that's, that's kind of right where you want to put it. you got to lead him into it so he can catch the ball running. Second down and 10 for Auburn at the 25. And just good to see Jonathan Wallace in the yes. game. I, well documented, but maybe the most respected person on this team, and good to see him in the game getting playing time. From the 25, the handoff to Cameron Artis Payne. Reverses field. Back up the middle. He's going to go. Touchdown. 25 yards on the carry. What a great job of using your vision as a running back and just make two or three very precise cuts. And I don't know that anybody ever touched him before he got in the end zone. Watch Wallace out there. He's looking for someone to block. Left, right, <laughs> left. And, and into made, the end zone. Yeah, right there at the end, a little on the leg, but into the end zone. Great job, great vision by Cameron on his pain. Parkey out to try and tack on the 56th point of the day for Auburn. And it is true. So with six minutes and 46 seconds to go in the third quarter, Tigers now on top 56 to 3. Auburn with 584 yards total offense this afternoon. And wow, you know, Cameron Artis Payne just looking at that touchdown run again. You know, Doc, he's running a zigzag pattern out through there and just cutting and cutting and cutting. Nobody's around. He keeps making the right moves and gets in the end zone. Great job and great day for Auburn running. Auburn has done what it was hoping to do this afternoon. It's been efficient offensively throughout the afternoon. 383 yards have come on the ground this afternoon. Gus Malzahn throughout the week. Gabe talked about he wanted more balance out of his offense. Well, he's had more balance out of his offense here this afternoon. He really has. Uh, you know, Auburn has you know, pretty much done what they wanted to do in, in the passing game and the running game, and that's that's very good to see. You get a lot of confidence going into, obviously, we talked about a very, very big game next week at Texas A&M where you know you're going to have to score some points. Right. You know you're going to have to. Defense, 
you it's kind of like a great score in basketball you're not going to probably stop them so much as you just hope to contain what they're doing and offensively you're going to have to put some points on the board both of these teams are back in conference action next week western carolina will be home for two straight weeks at home against wofford and elon and uh, auburn of course on the road at texas a&m as parkey puts the foot into it and uh, off the back line of the end zone for Western Carolina again to start first and 10 at its own 25 yard line. This has been all Auburn from the get go this afternoon. Tigers forced to punt on the opening drive for Carolina. Auburn has scored on every drive but one today. A touchdown on every drive but one. And that one uh, an interception. So we have not seen Stephen Clark today. Sullivan back at the quarterback spot. From the 25 first and 10 play action goes deep down the sideline complete. Boy, you Terry and Robinson with the catch. He may have caught the back end of that football. Uh, I mean, just a, an extremely good catch. But boy, what a good throw. I mean, he throws that ball on the line straight down the sidelines and, and hits his man in perfect stride right on the money. That's tough to do it any better than that right there. 35 yards on the, the catch to the Auburn 40 yard line. Terry and Robinson, a freshman out of Decatur, Georgia. Averaging 14 and a half yards per catch coming into this one. That will that stat will increase after that 35 yard pickup. Sullivan steps into the pocket and he's taken down. It'll be a loss. Elijah Daniel, I believe, uh, on that on that sack right there, did a great job. Pushed his man outside and then tucked back under inside to pick up the sack. Auburn had six sacks a week ago against Bo Wallace and Ole Miss. Daniel with another Auburn sack there. A loss of three on the play, second and 13. Sullivan in trouble and down he goes again. This time the, the sack goes for Jabrian Niles, number 93. Boy, it just, you know, they talked about uh, a lot of Auburn players talked about against Ole Miss how they were so good in the fourth quarter because of how fresh they were. And when you got guys that you can continually rotate in and the level of play doesn't drop down, you can do a lot, a lot of different things defensively, especially late in games when your top line players are fresh because they've had breaks. Niles, 6'2", 293, a sophomore from Mobile. Third and 21 as Western Carolina has gone backwards since that long pass play down to the 40. And that's scrimmaging from the 49. Sullivan flushed on the rollout. Looking down the sideline incomplete. Intended for Carnaris Benson. You know, and as, as, as to say insignificant as it might be uh, this late in this game with the score being the way it is, good to see. Auburn's defense gives up a 35-yard pass, kind of like rebounds. Tick, tick them off a little bit and come in and get them two big sacks and then a hold on third down and, and forces the punt. It always takes, uh, always takes pride in what you're doing, uh, or you need to always take pride in what you're doing no matter what the situation is, and obviously they are. Seacrest to punt it away. High punt. Bray will let it bounce. And now picks it up. And Bray out across the 20. He took a chance on that, but he's close to the 29 yard line. Yeah, that's. KP Hicks on the stop. Yeah, that reminds me of a, a quote uh, from the movie Major League. It's a great catch. Hey, don't ever do it again. <laughs> uh, but that's, uh, boy, that was risky right there. And, uh, you know, we're glad that worked out, but well, that's not something you want to do very often. 4 16 remaining in the third quarter. 56 to 3, Auburn on top. Jonathan Wallace leads the offense back on the field. Patrick Lyman lines up in the backfield for Auburn. And Lyman will get the carry. Number 41 
bowls his way for about nine yards on first down. It's 5'10, 194, junior from Huntsville, Alabama. Portland Carson, Brian Johnson combine on the stop. And very nice run, getting the hole, breaking a tackle, getting four or five more yards, running the ball hard. And Tony Stevens kind of mm -hmm. limp, limping out of the game yep. a little bit. Number eight coming out for Auburn, a little bit hobbled, and he's replaced by Melvin Ray at the top of your screen. Lyman again on the carry. Lyman gets the first down, good second effort across the 40 yard line. Taken down at the 41, no, the strong safety, number 28, Ace Clark on the stop. And Kyle Frazier in the game, uh, as he's been uh, this series uh, playing in the slot. And I know Auburn's probably not throwing the ball a whole lot right now, but it, it would be really, really nice to see him make a catch. Dimitri Reese splits wide to the left. Melvin Ray to the bottom of your screen. On first and 10 from the 41. Lyman again. Nice move out to the 45 yard line. Lyman carries to the 45. And good hard running still. I mean, Auburn offensive lineman uh, now, uh, I believe, flushed with backups and still moving the piles. They got a backup running back, and he's, he's running the ball hard. Very good effort by everybody, and it's still executing is what we talked about coming into this second half. And you got guys in there that are hungry that hadn't played a whole lot, and they're in there trying to show what they can do. Second down and six for Auburn at the 45. Right now, this is the Lyman show for Auburn, at least on this drive. He's, Auburn needs to get across midfield for the first down. And this is, uh, I don't remember a whole lot of third downs in the game, but. Uh, Auburn three of three on third downs. There you go. Three of them. Not many. But a streak in jeopardy if they don't get it. Here's third and four for Auburn. Batten in motion. Wallace looking to throw. Now tucks it and he's going to run and he's got the first down. We well, put his head down at about midfield, dove forward another four yards, taken down at the 46 yard line by Pete Balthrop Jr. And you're talking about a comfort level uh, as coaches, knowing you got a, a guy like Jonathan Wallace with game experience, a very studied young man in the game of football and a good decision maker right there. Nobody around and immediately doesn't hesitate, puts his head down and goes and gets the first down. Kyle Frazier is the tailback to the top. We believe it's worth Campbell to the bottom of your screen. And Lyman again with a spin move at the line and then taken down after a yard. And that's about all. Devon Richardson among those that were in on the stop. And I believe I just saw Jonathan Ford reporting the game at tailback. So he's played, I believe you are correct. <laughs> he has played both sides of the football today. Yes, he has. They're number 23 for Auburn. And there is his first carry. And Ford puts the head down inside the 40 yard line. Jaleel Larquette wears number two with the stop. Caleb Hawkins, defensive end there as well. Obviously, a very gifted athlete to be able to, uh, to play cornerback and running back. And, that, you know, you're talking about freshmen doing things. Uh, I wonder how many Auburn's had that have played both sides of the football as a true freshman. And that will take us to the end of the third quarter. It has been all Auburn here on this homecoming Saturday. We go to the fourth quarter as Auburn leads Western Carolina 56 to 3.
The, the marquee game across the country in the SEC is taking place down at Tiger Stadium in Baton Rouge. As 10th ranked LSU leads in the second quarter over Florida, 7 to 3. Fighting Tigers don't necessarily like playing at home in the afternoon. But Get TV dictated. They want it at night, but something tells me that uh, those fans are probably just as into that game right now. It, 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 it's hard to overlook the Gators coming to town. As Auburn substitutes here in the fourth quarter, we will do our very best to try and uh, get you as many of those names in this game as possible. As the fourth quarter begins, Auburn will have third down and two at the 38. This is a second series. We've seen Jonathan Wallace out there at quarterback as Auburn is about to launch its eighth play. Jonathan Ford with the carry, first down and more. He's into the clear. Jonathan Ford, 10, 5, touchdown! Wow. Pure, pure unadulterated speed. He made that break, uh, I don't know, at about the, the 10 or 15 yard line and cut back to the outside, and he just separated himself from everybody else. Wow. That was an impressive run, friends. Big hole. I'll tell you what, that line has just yeah. been terrific today for Auburn. They have. He just ran away from everybody right there at the end. And Cody Parkey out for the extra point. Oh, the punt, the snap is uh, taken down by White. Now Ryan's going to try and run it in, and he's shy. Nearly. Nearly got Almost there. got there. The snap was a little bit high. Wright didn't handle it. And uh, for the first time today, Auburn does not get that extra point. Clark and Richardson combined to stop. As we take another look at the touchdown run going to break here. Uh, Jonathan Ford. Big hole right up the gut. Makes a little move and then right here gets to the outside and just turns on the speed. Here's Bubba Watson. team was honored here today. They've been on campus for the last couple days. The 1963 team among the stars on that team, of course, Tucker Fredrickson was in the College Football Hall of Fame. He was a two-way player with that Auburn team. And today we've seen another two-way player, Jonathan Ford. He's played both sides of the football, not, not every play out there today, but no. uh, harkens back to those days. It does. It, you know, <laughs> it, maybe a little bit of a stretch, but uh, it does. And now see many two way players today. And, and you know what? Not only playing both ways and having the physical ability to do that, but as a freshman, knowing about enough about the defense and the offense to come in and do that. Um, obviously very talented in a lot of areas. 
Florida did, but did give us Wooden Girl on Monday. Parkey will kick it away. He's a little upset he didn't get to kick the extra point. So he just booms it four yards beyond the line of scrimmage, four yards behind the back. Let me throw out a couple offensive numbers for you. And remember, you've got to remember that Auburn is playing an FCS team here today. 655 yards total offense, 454 yards on the ground, 201 yards through the air. Eight different Auburn Tigers have scored touchdowns here this afternoon. First and 10 from the 25 for Western Carolina. Sullivan remains the quarterback. And the tailback across the 25 yard line maybe gets a yard and that's about all. Javari Mitchell I believe on that uh, on that tackle the uh, big big lick coming up and making a play. And who, who was greedy by the way and got the set, uh, two touchdowns today. Trey Mason. Yeah. Go. Number 21 with the two touchdowns on the deck. Lewis the tailback with Sullivan the quarterback for Western Carolina who will throw it here. Sullivan looks and throws and it's incomplete coming out of his break Terry and Robinson. And I believe Jonathan Ford right in his hip pocket. Right on cue. <laughs> Third and nine at the twenty six. Sullivan steps up into the pocket. He's being flushed out. He's going to get out of bounds. And he gets to the 35 yard shy of, an, of a Western Carolina first down. I know uh, Mitchell has uh, been known at more of using his legs. But Sullivan's got pretty good scramble ability, too. He gets out and then run, runs well when he gets outside and able to pick up four or five yards before he run out of bounds. And I didn't see Troy Mitchell get hurt, but he has not been back no, in the game hasn't. since, uh, I don't know, I think early in the second quarter. Punting situation and uh, Clark Seacrest has been busy today for Western Carolina. High punt. Bray takes it at the 35 and calls for a fair catch. And a much better job of coming up and catching that one in the air rather than letting it bounce and trying to catch it. 12 35 remaining in the fourth. Auburn has this one well in hand. Tigers 62, Western Carolina 3. Sixty two to three Auburn. Auburn has scored on every. So let me put this again. Auburn has scored a touchdown on every drive with the exception of one. Today. 
And Jeremy Johnson with his first collegiate start out there this afternoon, a four touchdown performance. He did throw the pick, but boy, he was very, very good in that college debut today. He really was. Jonathan Wallace is the, the quarterback now for the Tigers. And a handoff across the 40 yard line out to about the 42 yard line. Chandler Shakespeare yeah. in the game getting carried. Here's an interesting story on Chandler Shakespeare. I believe this may be the first time he has ever stepped on the field for Auburn. He already has a bachelor's degree, as I understand it. He's working on a, a master's degree. This guy's been a scout teamer for his whole career at Auburn University. Well, and tip his, your hat to that young absolutely. man. Absolutely. So Chandler is out there getting some playing time here this afternoon. Don't you know his teammates are? Uh, I would hope they are. Exhilarated yeah. for him. He gained a seven yards on that first carry. And he will get to carry again. And he has a first down across midfield down to the 46 yard line before Trevor Taylor makes the stop for Western Carolina. And boy, you realize the, the talent level uh, that is here at Auburn because Auburn has shown in the last, I mean, they got three guys that look like very, very quality running backs come in the game here in the second half that have not had to carry all year long and, and may not get any more of the rest of the year. And yet they're very good running backs. Uh, they, they've come to Auburn and they're, they're you know, two, uh, at least, uh, excuse me, Chandler now senior and done all that. He's never seen the field. He comes in, he's run, run twice and gets the first down. 5'10", 203, senior from Oxford, Alabama. 11.03 remaining in the contest. 62 to 3 Auburn. Shakespeare again with the carry. Burst through. Down to the sideline. Switches that hand with the football. And out of bounds at the 22. Make that the 23 yard line. That is old hat. Old hat. <laughs> Bust out to the outside. Switch the ball around and, and get what you can. Ace Clark came up to make the stop. Watch that change. Yeah, get it to the outside hand. Cover it up. He's not going to fumble it. Yeah, very nice, nice job. job. Yeah. yeah, don't fumble the football. That's a senior. He knows what he's doing. Patrick Young checks in at the H back spot. Gage Batten out. He got a lot of playing time here this afternoon. First and ten from the twenty three. Chandler Shakespeare stood up at the twenty yard line. That's about all he'll get on this carry. Trevor Taylor on the stop number 47 for Western Carolina. A gain of three on the play. You know right now they, this is uh, this is Shakespeare's drive right here. Well eight different Auburn players have scored a touchdown today. The only one with more than one Trey Mason. And for several of them it was their first ever touchdown in an Auburn uniform for Chandler Shakespeare as far as I can tell this is his first time he's ever been on the field on game day pretty special the carry Shakespeare tries to bounce to the outside he'll get a couple more yards and it will bring up a third down situation for Auburn and something tells me right now that Auburn's not kicking field goals Probably up 62 to three at this point. You're right. Yeah. Not, probably not going to kick a field goal. You're probably going to see two more running plays or, or however many if they get a first down and, and they're either going to score or turn it over on downs one or the other. <laughs> you got to think that uh, you know this is his first action but. Uh, there's no way 42 wants yeah. to come out of the game at no. this point. And you know they tell him too. don't don't even act like you're tired. Yeah. You've been begging for this for, for four years. Yeah. Yeah. Shakespeare with the carry first down and more to the 10. He is carrying the mail put a stamp on it. <laughs> he is carrying the mail. First down at the 10 for Auburn. And this will be first and goal for the Tigers. Six straight carries. For Shakespeare. Who may be having his own Rudy moment. Right now, it's a great call right there. <laughs> great call. Give it to him again. We've got to give that to our spotter today.
Shakespeare makes one man miss. And he gets five yards still on his feet. It'll be second and goal from the five. A nice move near the line of scrimmage. Court, Cortland Carson eventually made the stop on Chandler Shakespeare. Yeah, got penetration. He just, just shifts to the left and get up in there, get what you can get, five, maybe six yards. Or second five yards they give it. I think they might have yeah. assured him about a half yard. From the 10 to the five. You're Shakespeare after this play. If you don't score, you got to talk to your offensive line. <laughs> Second and goal from the five. Shakespeare on the carry gets a couple. It'll be third down and goal from the three. Yeah, you got to have a conversation right now. Look, guys, I just carried it eight times in a row. You got to open up a really big hole for me right here. Robert left up there among those guys. Shane Callahan on that offensive front right now for Auburn. Number 74, Will Adams. 76, Jordan Diamond on that offensive front right now. And it's third down and goal from the three. Has there been a timeout in this game by either team? I was about to say uh, ju just now. Yeah. <laughs> Except that the, that Auburn takes a delay a game. So Auburn will take a delay of game. It will be back to the eight yard line, third and goal from the eight. Let that clock run at this point with under six minutes now to go. And Auburn gets the playoff and Shakespeare with the carry. And he is stacked up at the line of scrimmage and that's about all he's going to get. And it will bring up a fourth down now for Auburn and goal. Well, he may have something on the rest of Auburn's running backs. I don't know how many times anybody else in that group has been handed the ball that many times in a row. <laughs> every every play of this drive has been Chandler Shakespeare. Nine straight carries. Wow. And get ready for <laughs> ten. Yeah. Number okay. forty two. And there is the tenth, and he'll get a couple more yards. And Auburn will turn it over on downs. And there may not be anybody happier right now to come off this field than Chandler Shakespeare. He <laughs> got ten straight carries right now. I imagine those legs are uh, they a little wobbly, especially for a guy who's, who's not used to having game carries. There is a there is a big difference in being in shape and being in game shape. Those right. are two different things. <laughs> Running sprints is one thing, and running a 20-yard sprint and having a 230-pound linebacker knock the fire out of you is something different. And we have a timeout called. With 4.54 to go in the game. 62 to 3 on.
62 to 3 Auburn. Gus Malzahn with a little handshake there for Chandler Shakespeare. As uh, he ran the ball 10 straight times. Just to repeat the story that, uh, that I've been told about this young man. Walk on career scout teamer at Auburn. Had never played, as I understand it, until today. And he got 10 straight carries for 61 yards. <laughs> what a great story. Yes. Great, great. Already, uh, already working on a master's degree. He's graduated. Pretty special. Yeah. 4.54 to go in the fourth, 62 to 3 Auburn. Western Carolina football from its own eight. Handoff. No, this is Sullivan on the carry. Quarterback breaks into the clear and ridden out of bounds at the 15 yard line. Shy of the first Sullivan down by the about three yards. And I tell you, the, the, the casual fan, and even maybe a, a pretty in depth fan, has no idea on a yearly basis how many guys are like Chandler Shakespeare yeah. that, that give their guts every day, every, every practice out there for four years, and you never see them on the football field. Second down and three for Western Carolina. We've seen Jonathan Ford play on both sides of the football, score a touchdown, his first Auburn touchdown today. He's out there cornerback right now at the bottom of your screen. And a nice run near the 30-yard line for Western Carolina. Trent Fisher making a, making a stop deep in the Auburn secondary. Seen a little bit of him and also see uh, I believe it's Mac Van Gorder out there, the son of Auburn's defensive coordinator last year. Garrett Brown was the one that ran the football. He's Cooper listed in the, on the stat sheet as a wide receiver. He's out there as a tailback at this point. First down carry out to the 29. Again with the carry close to the 30 yard line. Kenny Flowers, number 33, with the stop for Auburn. Clock runs inside three minutes. On the road for Auburn next week at Texas AM. What a jump in competition. And Western Carolina at home against Wofford. Auburn will play at 2.30 at Texas A&M. Brown again with the carry. Brown the ball carry. On that right hash mark out to the 33. Got a lot of guys in there defensively. In fact, all 11 guys in there defensively, obviously, at this point. Our backups are not getting a lot of, and really most guys not in the too deep. And it's good to see guys getting out there and, and still playing good defense. Number 91, Tyler Nero with that stop for Auburn. As Brown comes off the field, the tailback and Gary Lewis is back out there for Western Carolina with the play clock down to eight. And it brings up third and seven from the 32. Sullivan with the carry. Nice spin move or slide move. He gets to the 35 yard line. Jamal President with the stop. And President's a big, good looking young man. And punting situation for the Catamounts. Western Carolina two for Number 13 14, on third down today. And to Seacrest kicks it away and Gray will just let this one bounce and uh, roll inside the 10 yard line. With 105 remaining in this one. The punt travels 57 yards. Auburn getting ready to come back on the field. Interesting to see who we're going to have uh, line back up at running back.
Jefferson's and Auburn from the Patrick Lyman back there at the tailback spot as Auburn's going to. It's not the victory formation, but Wallace will take a knee. And Auburn will run out the clock. We'll have to run a play or two more. And this one will come to a close. And Gus Malzahn's ball club will now get ready to go on the road to Texas A&M in a 2.30 start from Kyle Field on Saturday. And I would think for what this ball game was, yep. uh, Auburn got exactly what they wanted. And that will be the final play. Auburn uh, accomplishes what it wants on homecoming. As the Tigers win it with the second starting to mark off the clock here this afternoon. Auburn will win by a score of 62 to 3. And eight different Auburn players scored touchdowns on a day where the Tigers ran a balanced offense and were smothering on defense. And now Auburn gets ready to go on the road to Texas A&M. A beautiful homecoming Saturday. And Auburn wins it by a score.